Hey guys, welcome to the Ozone and welcome to uh, a, a video I, I didn't think would ever be made really and it's about uh, this Scott controversy or controversy or however you want to say it that's been going on recently and honestly I don't, I don't know what to think of it. Um, obviously I'm with Scott on this one. Scott is not a bad guy in any way. He's he, he's not a bad guy. He's done so much good for the world. He's done so much good for the community. Um, and you can see that. It's it's evident from the past seven years of the franchise. Um, so if you don't know what's, what's been going on, uh, I will explain it. But before I do, make sure you like the video, you subscribe for more, uh, and then uh, yeah. So today I'm, I'm just I'm just going off with with no script. Uh, I'm just kind of talking to you guys uh, infinitely. I'm rambling about my thoughts on all of this because I haven't really had time to think about it all that much, and I just want to share my thoughts uh, at the moment uh, with all of it going down in the moment. Um, so yeah, basically um, Scott has um, it, Scott's a very religious guy. He's a very political guy. And he's been essentially donating money to these politicians. It, you don't really need to know much about this. But um, basically people are getting very edgy in terms of politics. Um, because he's, he's given money to this guy who or this woman or something. Uh, I don't know that much about politics or anything. So I, I'm really bad at explaining this. But essentially he's given people money who are racist and... I guess homophobic and, and stuff like that, um, and t t t like this really angers me because that doesn't automatically mean that Scott, you know, like agrees with those views. It means that he agrees with the person, maybe not that t like slight part of it, but he agrees that they will be a good person for the job. You know, so uh, it's really nothing. To, to do with, with Scott being racist or anything. I don't think he's racist at all. I think, as I was saying, evidently from the past seven years, he's been such a good guy supporting the community the entire way through. I mean, just look at like the Fazbear Initiative or whatever it's called. I keep, I always forget what it's called. Look at all of that, the fan games that people have been making. Um, he's been donating money to them um, so that they can continue making them and make them bigger and better than they've ever been. And usually bigger companies would just take that and then they'd throw it away. You know, they wouldn't give them money. They would just throw them away. Scott is one of the most supportive creators I ever know. And I mean, he's, he's going to be doing it for the rest of his career, I think. He's literally going to be, um, you know, just, just being supportive. Uh, he's, he's always been supportive of the community. Um, even when um, places like... Like, Twitter is a very dangerous place, I think. And Reddit can be quite, I guess, dangerous at times. But Twitter is the main one, right? Um, and people are just really mean on there. Um, I think it is the fact that people are, like, free and anonymous, I guess, on the internet. Uh, and it really, it really bugs me. It really bugs me, this entire internet problem and there's nothing we can do about it. Um, but Scott doesn't deserve all the hate. I don't know why people are hating on him for this small kind of thing. He has done so much for the community. It's insane. I've never seen any other creator be so supportive. He's been with us ever since the release of FNAF 1. Ever since the release of FNAF 1. He's been there. We know he has. <laughs> we know that he is a charitable person. I mean, he's donated to Dorco's streams like 50 times. He, do he donated to the MatPat stream. He's donated to various charities. He's donated to so many good places. And this is the one time, the, the, the politics, this is the thing that makes you say that Scott is a bad person for having a literal opinion. I'm sorry, but maybe I don't understand politics. Maybe I don't understand what's going on. But oh my God, I just wish people on the internet left people alone. You know, Scott is a good person. 
How can you not see that from what we've gotten in the past seven years? Um, it's atrocious, the internet, I think. Um, and I'm really scared, actually. I'm really scared that Scott's going to get cancelled. Um, it will be very unfair if he does. It would be so unfair. Why? I don't understand how he can get cancelled for this. <sighs> if Scott gets cancelled. <laughs> if Scott gets cancelled, I will eat my hat. I will. I, will. I don't even have a hat. I'll buy a hat and I will eat my hat. <laughs> um, oh, please, internet, just stop. <laughs> Please don't cancel Scott. It's... It really does show that you need to be very, very careful on the internet. Everything that you do, someone's watching, you know? Um, I actually heard about this the other day um, from a very cool channel called The Real Rejects. Uh, they did a nice video on it. Uh, it was explaining the fact that when you delete a YouTube video, it's not actually deleted. Yeah. And then if, say, the YouTube video was, um, again, was violating the community guidelines on YouTube, they still take deleted videos as violations. So in other words, if I have a deleted video from 10 years ago that violates the community guidelines right now, that video can still be given a strike. You know, that can, that can give my channel a strike, even though it's deleted. Um, anything that you do on the internet, it's out there forever. You know, it's, it's out there forever. You need to be safe on the internet. Um, I was going to do a Gacha Life 2 video. Um, ex explaining why Gacha Life is dangerous for children, but I guess this is it, like, <laughs> like, be safe on the internet, whatever you do, just do it with a brain, have brain cells, um, think about what you do before you do it, uh, and that goes without saying, and that goes for everything in life too, you know, um, but I, I really do hope Scott doesn't get cancelled, and I've, I, I really hate this because I feel like in like a week's time Scott's going to get cancelled and I'm just going to be in tears uh, and I'm going to be back here, tears in my eyes, <laughs> looking at this camera like Scott's getting cancelled, um, bye. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I don't know what this means for FNAF, honestly. Um, Scott shouldn't get cancelled because it, it really isn't that big deal, that big of a deal. Like, he can have a political, political opinion. I don't understand why he can't. Um, I do feel sorry for him as well. And his family. Oh, my God. His family getting, de like, what was it? Murder threats? Death threats? Um, you know, like, it's, oh, my God. Imagine that. Imagine saying something on the internet and then everybody is like, I'm going to kill your family. The internet is a messed up place. The internet's a messed up place. So messed up. I don't, I don't know what to say. Um, I've been trying to think of words to say when I, when I first sit down, but I don't have any words to start this. Um, this is just crazy. It's, it's all escalated so quickly, you know? Um, and I really wish it wasn't happening. I can't believe it's happening, actually. Um, I 
This guy is incredible. Scott Cawthon is so amazing as an independent creator, as a part of a, a larger group uh, in terms of game creating, um, and he's a massive supporter of so many different charities, a massive supporter of his fan base, a massive supporter of his fan game fan base. Just everything that Scott has ever done, in my eyes, has been correct. It's, it's just been right, you know? And he's always been here. Um, I said this in the other video that I might conjoin with this video. Um, so I'm sorry if you're confused about what just happened, but... Oh my god. He's retiring. He... <laughs> I'm pretty sure I said the other day, as well, that if Scott gets cancelled, I'm going to eat my hat. <laughs> I don't think he got cancelled. Honestly, I think he retired before he got cancelled. Um... <laughs> I'm re like, I can't cry. I, I, I have no tears to cry right now. Because I just, I'm in disbelief. It's probably going to happen once I finish recording this video. I'm probably going to end up bawling um, in tears. But oh my god, this is up. I'm getting shivers. I'm getting the shivers. <laughs> I'm getting goosebumps. Um, look, I'm really upset. Like I, I woke up this morning... And I was really, really upset with the fact that there was this picture that said Scott is retiring now, woo. Um, it really, really hit me hard. And I was on my way to work as well. I was in the car, I was on my way to work. I looked on Discord and the first thing I see is that Scott is retiring. Uh, I have about five pings on my, my Discord alone. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's hard to believe that all of this is happening. And it's happening so quickly as well. It's happening very, very quickly. Um, he's just suddenly retired. Um, no, like, warning, nothing like that. Um, it's just, it's been done. It's been done. Um, but what I was going to say is, although I'm really upset about him retiring, uh, I know it's best for him. I know it's it's best for him. Um, Scott, Scott's been getting so much hate recently, uh, all over the internet, for both him and his family. I mean, I forgot what he said, but he has quite a few children, and he has a wife, or are they getting married? No, I think they're already married. I can't remember, honestly. Like, my brain is going haywire. It's just kind of, it was unexpected for him to suddenly retire like this. And I, I've been dreading this day for years. I've been dreading this day for years because Scott is so good at doing things for the community, uh, making games, supporting the community. I've said all this so many times before, but it's just, it's true. Everything that he has done, I, I, can, I can put a, an award on it, you know, like this is what Scott has done. Like, this is all Scott. Um, you know, the thing that was touching to me in that, like, post, I guess, in the picture um, that Scott put out was actually the part about the fan art. Um, if you didn't see, it was the picture, and then there was the fan art, which is really good fan art, by the way, um, to the person who created it. But um, Scott was like, this is fan art for the thing that I created. Isn't it amazing how this has happened, you know? It's like, the, the internet is amazing, but it's also horrible at the same time. But let's think about the amazing part for a minute. The internet is so cool, <laughs> right? It's, it's so cool. Um, and the, the things you see on the internet, um, all the good things you see on the internet are 
really up there like you, you see a lot on the internet and you and it your jaw literally drops um and yeah he really respects the community and he loves all the fan art that comes in um it's 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 mad it's mad um and that really touched me for some reason because i don't know i don't know why it touched me it it hit me it hit me good because he's he's like i guess he's like this is how far i've come I've come from having failed games to making one of the biggest game franchises uh, in the present day right now, um, and people making these fan arts, even children making these fan arts uh, of their favorite characters. The other day, I was babysitting children, and I found out that one of them, uh, well, they watch Gacha Life videos, but that doesn't surprise me, but they also... Um, we, we were drawing and they were drawing FNAF characters. They, they literally drew a lol bit. I, I can show you a picture right now if you want. I don't know where it will be. But they drew a lol bit and it was so good. It, like, it was amazing. And I've seen, like, I live on an island, okay? I live on an island um, and it's got, what, like 60,000 people on it? Maybe, maybe a little bit more, but like 60,000 people on an island, okay? And I'm on this island with... Fifty-nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine. No, um, with all these other people, um, but it's a really small population. A eh? sixty, sixty thousand. Very, very small island. Um, and then I was walking around uh, in in the town, and this kid. Uh, actually, no, it wasn't me. It, my friends were walking around in town, uh, and this kid comes up to them and he starts talking about Five Nights at Freddy's or whatever, and they're like, oh. You know Five Nights at Freddy's, so do you know Ozone? And he was like, hmm, I might have heard of him before. And then my friend said, oh, we know Ozone. Uh, and then the boy was like, oh. <laughs> um, so shout out if you're watching this. <laughs> no, um, yeah, no, that, I, I find that kind of uh, amazing, really. How big the community is, how big FNAF is, like, it's crazy. I didn't think it was that big, but if you look all over the internet, it's all there. It's all over the internet. And this one guy, this one independent man made this happen. One guy, an independent creator. It's not like a big company like Nintendo or Sega or Sony or anybody like that. It's this one dude who has created all of this. He's gotten a little help from Illumix. He's gotten a little bit of help from Steel Wolf. He's gotten help from loads of other people. And... <laughs> I'm gonna cry. I am actually gonna cry. Look, Scott, Scott's just made all of this possible and all we can do now is just accept the fact that he's retiring. Um, put our hands down. Uh, and just say thank you, really, because no, nobody's ever really had the time to just come up to Scott and say, you know what, ma'am, thank you, pat on the back, <laughs> thank you for all you've done. Seriously, he's not, he's not going to watch this, obviously, but Scott, if you do watch this, you have changed my life. You've changed my life. You've changed other people's lives, okay? You've changed so many people's lives. You know, the game theorists probably wouldn't even be as big as they are today if you didn't make FNAF. Think about that. I wouldn't be here making YouTube videos if it wasn't for FNAF, okay? So many people, like, I wouldn't have met some of my, fr some of my best friends today if it wasn't for FNAF. It's crazy how far I can take that, you know? You, as a one person, as an individual, you created a game, and now it's gone to this, now you're retiring. Crazy, right? I mean, the years must have flown by. Um, you're retiring now, uh, and it's really sad, but look at what you've created. Let's, let's take a step back and look at everything, right? You created, like what, like 15 games in total? I, I mean, I guess there's like loads of troll games 
There's like, I don't know, I, I haven't counted the FNAF games, obviously, but there's loads of games. Um, there's a, a trilogy, a novel trilogy, um, the Silver Eyes, the Twisted Ones, uh, the Fourth Closet. Uh, then there's all the Fazbear Frights books that haven't even finished yet. Um, Security Breach is coming up. There's all of the merch. I mean, this is mad. It's so crazy. So, so crazy. The Scott from seven years ago, when he first created FNAF 1, is not the same Scott as today. Scott has changed for the better. And I'm so happy that he's retiring. So happy for him and his family. Uh, and I really hope that in his retirement, he has a happy life. And he, he's, he's going to celebrate, I guess. He, I hope he celebrates... Uh, I really, yeah, I, I mean the best for your family, Scott. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't have much else to say. Um, I don't have much else to say. I've got a few more things to talk about quickly before we end this video. Um, I'm sorry if it's a bit long, but it's emotional, you know? We, we can't just let this go and we can't just not talk about it because it, it's very emotional. Um, and I would like, I mean, if you see this part of the video, thank you, Scott, so much. Uh, I, I really hope everyone in the comments says the same thing. Hashtag thank you, Scott. Hashtag I stand by Scott. Uh, all of that malarkey. Thank you so much, Scott Cawthon, for everything that you have ever done. It's, it's, it means the world to me. You're a good guy. You always have been. Da! <laughs> um, the, the thing I don't want to say is a lot of people uh, are going to be expecting, like, law reveals. Um, and for that, I don't know where... I don't see the point in, in law reveals. Um, and there's a few reasons why. First of all, if Scott Cawthon uh, was like, okay, I'm retiring, here's the FNAF timeline, um, then everybody would, I guess, go crazy. Uh, they wouldn't accept that it's the timeline because they would find minor details that are in games and they would say, that contradicts, so that can't be right. Scott, you've messed up. You know, then Scott would just get loads of hate during his retirement, which he doesn't want, obviously. Um, also, I like the fact that the law is left to us. It's a problem for us, um, rather than just the answer giving to, given to us. Um, and, I, and I think that if the answer was just given to us, um, the fan base would shrink. Like, it would literally half in size. Because... The law would be given to us, all the FNAF theorists leave the community forever, you know? Um, so I like how he hasn't told us law or anything, or he probably won't. If he does, then uh, I, I'll, I'll never forgive him. <laughs> um, if, he, if he does really share the law with us, then I guess that's cool, but I don't want that to happen because I want to keep theorising on FNAF, because FNAF isn't done. FNAF isn't done. Um, yeah, if you th I, I want to talk about the future of FNAF, really, because one thing that does appear for me is the FNAF movie. Because um, the FNAF movie has had a little bit of production or whatever, or casting, I don't know. I don't know how far the FNAF movie has come. But does that mean that it's completely stopping now, or it's been postponed, or something like that? I don't know. Uh, I know the books are probably going to get a little bit more postponed. I know Security Breach is definitely going to be more in the future. Might even be 2022 now. You don't know. Um, I, yeah, I know that a lot of things are going to be postponed as a result of Scott's retirement. Um, but just, I, I'm thinking of this now as a happy thing, you know? Um, 
let's think of it like a children, uh, like a like a child in this universe. Child dies, the child soul has his happiest day, and then that's it. He's gone forever. <laughs> uh, I I like to think that Scott is is now living in his own happiest day mini game. Um, <laughs> that's a cool analogy. I like that. That's a nice metaphor. Um, but yeah, I guess that's all I all I really want to say. Um, yeah, I would love to see where the where the future of FNAF comes. It's never going to be the same. That's what I'm going to say. It's never going to be the same. We're never going to get um, the the classic Scott Cawthon teasers of like slow like slightly dimmed images where you brighten them up and then it says it's me or something like that. We're never going to get the same law. It's going to be completely different after Security Breach or something. Hopefully it'll be in like a different universe or like or something like that. Or it just won't be canon or something. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know where how far we can go with this. I don't know how much Scott has retired, if you know what I mean. Like, will Scott still have a lot of the calls in terms of Five Nights of, in terms of the decisions in Five Nights at Freddy's? Also, will Five Nights at Freddy's continue? That's a question I have been trying to answer for a while. I think it will, but Scott will have to sell it to a major company. Hopefully it will be Steel Wool or someone like Steel Wool um, who will handle it right because Steel Wool made FNAF VR look amazing. Uh, it needed a bit of polishing, but Security Breach does look very polished uh, and I am proud of Steel Wool for what they have brought to the FNAF universe. Um, and yeah, <laughs> I hopefully it will go to Steel Wool and hopefully they will make the FNAF games for us from now on. Unfortunately, lore might be a little bit of an issue going forward. But hey, at least Scott's happy. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm going to say thank you so, so much for watching this video. Um, everybody, please use the hashtag Thank you, Scott. Hashtag thank you, Scott. We love you. We really do love you. Um, we're always here for you. Um, and, or well, I'm always here for you. <laughs> uh, some people may not be, but I'm definitely always here for you. Uh, call me. <laughs> um, no. Just thank you so much uh, for everything. And I mean that. Um, look into my eyes. Thank you. You've made my career. Uh, no, he hasn't. Yeah, almost. You've almost made my career. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you want more. Uh, I will be doing more commentary videos in the future. Uh, so yeah, subscribe for that. Um, and like if you're a Scott simp. <laughs> <laughs> what I have to end like that? Okay, whatever. <laughs>